My name is Martin Newman and I am the Consumer Champion. Welcome to my new podcast, which is all about the focus on consumers. And I am joined by three lovely consumers. I myself, of course, am a consumer. Um, Manny Claire, where are you uh, Where are you joining us from today? Uh, Bermondsey, South London. Bermondsey, South London. Dave, what about yourself? Uh, I'm joining you from Twickenham in South West London, I think. South West London, fantastic. And Leila? Um, I'm joining from Limehouse in East London. Right. So, and I'm in North London, so it looks like we've covered London. <laughs> North, South, East and West. Listen, guys, thank you very much for, for joining me. I'm very grateful for your time uh, and your feedback. Um, I just want to start by talking about what's going on right now, generally, um, in the world of consumerism. Obviously, we're, we're facing quite a difficult time, you know, with the cost of living crunch, prices, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'm just keen to kind of understand how it's affecting you generally and, and any if it's whether or not it's actually impacting any of the decisions that you take, you know, with regards to where you spend your money, what you plan to do, or anything like that. So, Leila, why don't we start with you? Um, any changes in your behaviour as a result of what's going on right now? Um, yeah, I mean, so in the last kind of couple of months, I guess, so I, I work, I live in a shared ownership property, so I own part of it and rent part of it. And I think, um, you know, the rent in April took a huge um, increase. So, you know, something to the tune of around £100 a month extra on top of the, the usual kind of increases. And then obviously I know that, you know, electricity and gas are higher too. So, um, you know, we did actually get a cost of living, a small cost of living pay rise from work um but it kind of you know it wasn't kind of enough to cover the um you know the sort of six seven percent you know inflation hike so it has been um i guess it's changed my behavior as in so i um live on my own currently in a two-bedroom flat which is very nice you know but um lately i've been um, actually looking to get somebody in as a tenant to um to kind of help out with the with the rent because you know it's getting yeah. getting to a point now where actually like a lot of my money's being swallowed up with um you know just just general being alive <laughs> before you can get onto any of the fun stuff yeah right <laughs> good just generally being alive that kind of took me there to, took me by surprise there but you, we certainly want you to continue to do that okay um dave what about yourself any any sort of immediate impact of what's been going on with the cost of you know whether that's inflation energy costs, cost of goods or anything, and also how that may or may, or may not have affected you in terms of your your patterns of behaviour, what you spend your money on, etc. Yeah, I'd say um, I've become a lot more critical of everything that I'm buying. Like, do I need to get the luxury butter or is just butter, butter, you know? Um, yeah. I'm a lot more critical of that. I'm, I'm sort of having a look at the receipt when I get home thinking that's gone up from what I normally would have got um i think i'm appreciative a lot more of what i do buy and when i do buy it you know sometimes there's basic things like toothpaste and you think you could get the extra whitening stuff that does amazing things or you could just literally mm. get something to clean your teeth um but yeah i think the appreciation you know is it, it, it if it's hitting me it hasn't caught up with me but the appreciation thing is what i like to do so yeah. If I do happen to splurge out on some particularly nice Waitrose organic Dutchy original stuff, I'm going to savour that. I'm going to savour every single bite instead of making it a, a routine thing. Yeah, it's um, not so much a commodity. It's more of a treat almost. Exactly. Right. Even um, sometimes if I leave work late, I'll go to the Marks and Spencers on the way home. And I was talking to someone about this and I, I, I said, you know, just as a treat. And she was like, a treat? Exactly. It is a treat. You can't be getting Marks and Spencers every time you come to work and leave so um not yet to hit me I'm trying to keep this bachelor lifestyle that i uh, i think and assume that i have up but i do think that it's gradually creeping in the more headlines that i see and it will catch up so yeah yeah and that's an interesting an interesting thought there for mns just in, in the context of i guess on on one hand very positive kind of brand confirmation of their positioning and being seen to be quite aspirational by you but then on the other hand I'd be a little bit worried if lots of consumers like you were looking at them and thinking actually you know I'm not sure I can afford M&S on a regular basis at the moment with what we're going through so maybe there's a wee bit of a 
tweaking to brand positioning or promotions that they might have to uh, have a think about. Manny, Claire, what about yourself? Just in terms um, of what's going on, how's it affecting you? Well, the, specifically um, car use here, we're in the ultra low emission zone and we have a diesel Golf. So now we're charged, I think it's something like £13.50 every day it's, it's used. And, you know, it, I, I've definitely become more conscious of not, not using the car. Um, and it will be things like school run. I mean, school isn't particularly far away, but if it's, it, I mean, this weather's glorious, but if it's a really wet day, it kind of feels a bit cruel saying, come on, we're walking to school when we could just jump in the car. But it's almost like realigning yeah. that with, well, and also the petrol situation, but also yeah. do a food shop the same day. Uh, am, is there an after school, you know, thing that's happening also? Being more conscious of that. And the other thing, I mean, I've put the lights on to, to light this <laughs> accordingly, but I have become like uh, Ricky Tomlinson. It's like Blackpool and Illuminations in here. I'm switching <laughs> lights off all the time. Yeah. Uh, and even things my husband said to me, you know, if we, you know, you leave stuff on just charging, look, leave a charger in. It is, even if you've got no phone plugged in, it's, it's costing you money. I think we've just yeah. become more conscious of it. Um, yeah. And, and being more disciplined about not running everything, you know. I think it's a really good point, actually. You know, you're having to almost implement sort of military-style planning to your day now if you're going to take the, the car out in yeah. order to get, in order for you to feel that you've had value for money for what you've had to spend to use the car um, yeah. on, 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 on that occasion, given that it's costing you £13.50 never before you've even before you've even started to account for the petrol and everything. I've got an electric car coming, I have to say, I cannot wait. The the prospect of not having to go to the pumps anymore and, yeah. and the eye-watering amount of money that it costs you to fill up your car these days is uh, very, uh, very comforting. And eventually when that arrives, whenever that happens to be. We've talked a little bit just generally about your kind of, uh, how your behavior maybe is changing a little bit. I'm keen to understand whether or not it's affecting you in terms of, you know, are you still shopping? Are you still buying? So outside of M&S and those more considered purchases when, you know, in terms of what you're buying from a food point of view, are you still buying fashion? Are you planning to go on holiday? Um, you know, are you going out for meals? Who would like to, who would like to jump in there? Leila, are you looking like you've got something you'd like to say? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, um, you know, it's, it's a tricky one really because we, uh, you know, obviously after two years of lockdown, um, now, you know, all of my kind of plans, like groups of friends and everything's gone into overdrive, you know, booking. Um, I, f I found I had quite a few um, trips away in, in the diary and quite a few dinners and things like that, um, you know, just kind of in the diary as well. And I actually look at my diary now month by month and I'm like, I can't afford everything in that diary. So I'm going to need yeah. to start, um, you know, just cancelling on things and um so it's kind of like, um, it's like a process I go through sort of like every every couple of weeks is just look through the diary and I'm like, right, what do I need to prioritize this month? Um, you know, because I can't go on eight dinners, you know, I'm gonna have to go three. And, um, yeah. you know, so kind of um, doing it like that so that you're not having to do everything on a shoestring, um, you know, and the same goes for fashion as well. You know, I've, I've been shopping once this month, I can't really justify doing it again or I'll have to think about doing it within the next um, paycheck. Um, yeah. you know, so you kind of always think of things on like a paycheck to paycheck basis, like how much disposable income can I actually justify spending? Yeah. Yeah. It's always been like that, but I think probably even more. Even more so, so now. now. Yeah, of course. Mm. Marie Claire? Um, sorry, there's something I've observed as well. Because all the, of the, um, the restaurants and the you know, service industry are catching up on what they lost in the lockdowns, it feels like none of the offers you used to get for places you may be loyal to like a pizza express or jamie's italian i know that's gone now but i used to feel that there were more things to entice you into restaurants you know years ago and now we sort of need that a bit more you need to be able to say okay well let's go to i don't know pizza express because we can get this deal that they're offering mm. it almost feels like every pub has a certain price for a bog standard burger and chips which seems to be 16 pound 95 you know it feels like th these amounts adjustable that's what you pay now everything's gone up and it 
it does feel like there aren't many kind of nice touches where you all go, oh, that was great. We got 50% off. It, do, it just feels like yeah. it's, not, it's, it's not in their consciousness because of their catching up. Mm. It's a very good point because I was going to ask you all actually about whether you felt brands were doing enough for you during this crisis, you know, to really sort of demonstrate empathy and, and you know, the, the willingness to kind of do what they can to support you. Obviously, it's a bit of a catch-22, isn't it? Because if you're running a business, you can't run at a loss. They're, you know, everybody's costs have gone up. It's, you know, it's a snowball effect across the board. But I think you make a really, that's a really interesting point, actually, about the fact that generally there's this kind of, maybe it was an acceptance almost for a period of time um, where, you know, these hospitality businesses and other businesses that, that had opened up again were going to use the, the opportunity to kind of catch up uh, not only on lost demand, but on profitability. And maybe now they need to think a bit harder about how they make sure they maintain them, you know, they, they maintain your loyalty, particularly yeah. given the, you know, the, the fact that you're all having to think more about where you spend your money. Keen to understand whether or not you're still buying, you know, are you still buying fashion? Are you planning on holidays? Are you going out to eat? You know, and has this current um, cost of living crunch change your behavior in that respect at all yeah i definitely haven't bought clothes in a long time i you know during the lockdowns i hardly even left a particular circle a local circle um from where i live so i decided at that point i just if i didn't need it if it didn't need replacing i wasn't going to go out and get it so the only stuff i got is the staples like socks underpants the odd vest um and a replacement pair of shoes so I decided two years ago that because of that that approach where we had to make do with all we had, well, yeah. that's all I need. All I'm going to end up doing is making a bigger mess behind me. So um, cost of living hasn't impacted that. I'd say the pandemic has, and um, it, it allowed me to just refresh and appreciate everything I have. I feel like appreciation's uh, one of those words that I'm going to keep coming back to, a recurring theme. Yeah. Um, Holidays also decided that I didn't need them too much. I mean, I think I need breaks. I'd happily go down to the coast and um, go to a budget hotel and just live my best life looking at the views as opposed to what happens when I open my eyes in that divey hotel. Um, but yeah, and then as, as for eating out, I've definitely banked up a whole load of like Nando's loyalty card stuff um, from the previous years. That being the key one, despite the fact I'm a vegetarian now, um, but you can still get a nice tortilla wrap that doesn't include chicken. Um, so I had so many loyalty things banked up previously, and I have to appreciate the companies that do have them. I think Just Eat and a couple of other ones like Stamp Cards, you can still redeem them. And occasionally, if I look at my credit card statement, I think that's a little bit too much this time, but I still want to treat myself then. Now I'm starting to cash out on these things. and um, Yeah redeem them and get a nice treat i think that you know this whole concept of appreciation and you know appreciating things more because you know we we don't have the ability necessarily to to do as much as we may have done previously but then the way we behaved previously was maybe you know less considered do you think that because we just had more money or whatever do you think that in some respects that almost helps to accelerate our focus on, for example, conscious consumption, given that what you're talking about now is really making much more, con you're all talking about making much more considered decisions about where you go, what you spend your money on, you know, and valuing what you do more. Um, just start with you, Dave. I mean, do you think, I mean, is conscious consumption as in the environment and everything else, is that something you were focused on? And if not, do you feel like, the time that we're going through at the moment, if anything, is actually accelerating your your focus there and, and changing your behaviour as well. Um, I have to say that I think it was something that was always within me. Like, um, I don't think I left the mentality of being a student, for one. So um, I was very conscious of the fact that, um, yeah, I, I can't really remember my my education in money. I just thought that you, you don't need to spend it on everything. You could stick it in a savings account at least when the savings rate were good mm -hmm. um what i have found myself doing for the first time 
ever in my life, and it's outside of my professional life, is I made a budget uh, for once, ever. Um, I had to get myself a camera as part of some of the um, freelance stuff that I do, which is a big investment. So I plotted out a budget, put a date of when I bought everything. And most crucially, because it's so expensive, I had to shop around to get the best deal. Now, I've never done a budget in my life, but what I do know is how to do a couple of um, tricks on Excel. So I put an extra column in there. One of them said how much this is going to cost. And I just looked at the total and went... So to make myself feel better, I put in how much I saved and I had basically everywhere that I applied a discount or a voucher code or, or I applied like I had hundreds of pounds of Amazon vouchers banked and I could just look at that extra little cell that showed how much I'd saved. Granted, how much I spent was quite a lot, but I was trying to give myself a more warm feeling. And this camera has to last several years, so it's definitely a considered approach. Um, mm. Big, what do you call it? A big ticket item? Yes. Um, so yeah I had to make that leap and I tried to do it as sensibly and economically as possible yeah. um, which I don't know if that's selfish or unselfish well, that's a good example and, a, and, and I'm sure a, a good um, experience for you in actually managing managing, creating and managing a budget will uh, stand you in good stead I'm sure for the future for sure Leila um, do you feel I mean have you become more conscious in your consumption you know not, I'm not, I, not so much from a I've not got as much money to spend, but in the context of the situation, are you becoming more conscious, do you think, in terms of what you buy? Is your focus on the environment and everything else, is that almost heightened as a result of what we're going through now, do you think, or has it not really made any any difference? Um, I think definitely not necessarily due to the cost of living, but it's more from a kind of overall sustainability point of view. Like, So take, um, you know, fashion, for example. So. You know, two years ago, I would have had like ASOS deliveries coming and going, you know, all this plastic packaging. I used to be quite aware of it. And, you know, and also kind of like fast fashion as a as a concept as well. You know, it kind of used to be fine for you to buy, you know, spend a hundred pounds, get five things, you know, return a couple of them. And they're just sort of sitting, piling up in the wardrobe. But actually now it's kind of, I'm, it's almost like I feel an element of shame if I've got like a big ASOS mm -hmm. delivery, you know, that comes, that comes to my door. I'm just thinking, God, that's just more stuff that's just going into my you know into my wardrobe that I'm probably going to wear once and so you know I'm trying really hard to kind of now um think about where I'm getting like buying fashion from for example you know like is it from a sustainable source you know like do we need all this packaging so in a way I'm kind of almost more inclined to physically go to the store like I you know will never I will I'll always take bags with me rather than kind of taking their plastic bags and stuff and I think um you know and it, the same goes for I guess food as well, you know, it, is, it has to, I'll make much more considered purchases rather than buying mm. loads of stuff. Um, you know, and I think that it's kind of spreading because when you look at, I don't know, Love Island, for example, like not that I watched it, but I read the headlines to say that, you know, they're, they're sponsored by brands that, you know, are very anti fast fashion, which is, um, you know, amazing because actually previously they all used to be decked out in boohoo and, you know, and stuff. Yeah. And actually now that's kind of really becoming like out of fashion. Which is um, which is great. I think you know it's encouraging us to be more creative and you know look into kind of vintage stuff and and um, not just kind of going for the sort of easy cheap option. So um, yeah, and I think now it's always becoming like a badge of honour if you say, oh, you know, that's a nice dress. Or actually, you know, this is a really old one that I've customised. Yeah, that's yeah. really really interesting thought there actually, and, and I picked up on the fact that you mentioned about it's almost driving your behaviour to shop in store rather than online to some extent because you don't want to be going through that process of having these big bags and boxes and packaging and everything else. Uh, but clearly a job for ASOS and, and the other, not only online businesses, but multi-channel brands to sort out what they're doing around sustainability to be authentic about it and to communicate it you know, super clearly for, for customers, otherwise you're going to go elsewhere. What about you, Manny Claire? Is that something again that you're focused on? Yeah, I mean, I I do. It alarms me sometimes how much Amazon is the default for something you might need. And somebody was saying recently, oh, you can also get your groceries from there. And I think because we were all very scared in the pandemic, and we were sort of being told we really should only go out to food shop once a week and things like that. I remember. In, and this is very pandemic specific, but going to, to do a food shop and just buying so much because it was, well, when can we go again? 
And mm. now I, I hate throwing food out. It pains me to something goes out of date. I, I'm really, I like cooking and I am really conscious about the food we buy. We, because of where we are, I'd much rather, sorry, I'm assuming you can see where I am in central London, but <laughs> we're in London Bridge and it's very close to Sainsbury's Local, Tesco Metro, um, Simply Food, M&S. And I, you realise quite how much more you're spending if you're just nipping in and out of there several times a week as opposed to going mm-hmm. to Aldi, Lidl and doing a, a big shop. Um, mm. And I suppose de- definitely f- food is... I think more about, you know, what what we're having. But then I'll use get here if I feel like we need some groceries all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, and I think we've all become conditioned into thinking stuff can be immediate. Um, but sometimes when I see the DPD drivers who are doing loads of drop offs, I always notice how fast they're going because an app to me feels like a health and safety thing like they're told they have X amount of deliveries to do in a day. And it, you know, I often think, God, I, you know, someone's cut you up or something. It's often a DPD driver because they're, they're, they're on this kind of timeline. And that, it, uh, that I think, I, I wish we'd all slow down a bit and not think we have to have everything immediately, you know? Sure. Well, again, I think, I think you make a really good point. You know, we, we do live in a world of, the media is saying we're all kind of task rich, time poor, and we have become very much accustomed to, you know, increasing opportunities to buy from brands, whether it's Amazon, whether it's the food, you know, the grocers or or whoever, to the point now where you can order things and get them delivered in, in, in 15 or 20 minutes, you know. It's the convenience that as consumers we, we, we clearly look for. But I think, I think you all make great points, and I think for me, what you're talking about. I mean, I think we've all got guilt when it comes to the environment, sustainability, and whether it's food waste or, you know, fast fashion or whatever it is. I think we all carry a bit of guilt, don't we? Because we're all very aware of the impact of what, you know, of consumption on the planet and everything else and people who can't, you know, uh, scrape enough together to to have a meal and we're chucking food out because we haven't used it and it's gone past the sell-by date. I think it's to some extent beholden on, on us, but then it's also beholden on the brands that are selling us to help us and provide us with the ability to be more conscious and to, you know, be more mindful and, and behave in a slightly different way, I guess, in relation to what we buy, how we buy it, how we consume it and so on and so forth. Really interesting. I'd like to just move on a little bit to talk about um, customer experience in a kind of general sense to start with and just ask you all about good and bad experiences i'm just keen to get an understanding of you know where you've had a really good experience where you've had a bad experience um and just let's have an open conversation about it so i'll start with you dave um we'll start with the positive any good experiences that you've had either in retail and food and beverage hospitality travel anything you want to call out recently (laughs) <laughs> yeah, um, they're all at chains though, unfortunately. So the other day I walked in to a Yumi Sushi, which is a chain. I've only seen one of them, but they look like a chain. And um, I wanted some heated food, but it looked like it was like 10 minutes before closing time. So I get in there and I ask if I can have some vegan katsu. They're like, we're going to have to heat it up. And I said, it's okay, I'll wait. Oh, by the way, um, I'm with some friends down the street and they, they gave me 20 quid. Can I just buy 20 pounds worth of... Oh, there's no sushi in the fridge. Um, so I don't know what it is. that they, they, they had no reason to do this. They packed up all the sushi from that day. They basically said, do you want this stuff? And I walked out with about five trays of sushi and four soups, all for the cost of nothing. So I don't know what the hell that was. Maybe they they, they, they like my face. I don't know. But did, we they got actually, talking. did they actually take money from you? Did they give you it? For, for nothing, basically, or did they actually take money from you? I think the caveat is that I paid for the hot food, but the rest of the stuff, when I explained, oh, yeah, look, we're doing a little games night down at the bar. Like, I, yeah. I, I don't want to return empty-handed, and they did give me 20 quid. So I returned, and I had uh, a lot of sushi and a rolled-up £20 note that I returned that I 
slid along nice and slowly like don't worry about it I've got it handled um, I'm also going to show you a little trophy that I got that I didn't know existed so I just want to give a shout out to Oliver this I did not know this existed it might be mirrored for you it says it's on us and it's from Waitrose right. um, I was having an awful day at the office and I was just not having it and then someone said hey look just come over we can talk whatever watch a film just relax and I was like no I'm not doing it I'm not coming no under no condition am I coming and it's like well what if I get you a beer and I was like okay you might have changed my mind a bit so what do you want and I said right I want this very specific beer that you can only get in Waitrose it's a Belgian triple it's the strong stuff it's delicious I said, okay, cool. You're going to come? I said, okay, I will come. And then it's good to talk these things out, so I'm going to come, especially if there's beer. So they didn't have this Belgian triple in there. So what did they do? They went up and asked the beer sommelier, if that's a correct terminology, and yeah. just said, hey, look, my friend really wants this beer, but they don't have it. But having a terrible day, and just I just want to make him feel better. So they recommended another beer, and she took it to the till. And then suddenly... I can only imagine that it was like some kind of vaulting over some kind of turnstile kind of thing. This guy whose name is Oliver comes with this voucher and says, hey, don't pay for that yet. Don't worry about it. It's on us. Uh, this, this, All my experiences seem to be doing with getting free stuff. Uh, <laughs> but this particular one was. You're clearly good at that. So <laughs> we need to get your playbook on that one. So. Yeah, but this one was particularly nice because it was an act of unselfishness. You know, I didn't realize that the these Waitrose things. I know Pret, they've got a certain amount of free food that they can yeah. give. Uh, but Waitrose, I do kind of wonder that I got a free drink out of this, and it was massively appreciated. But what else is Waitrose? The uh, what they call it the bellwether of uh, the high street. What else have they, who who else and what else has been given away for free just because a member of staff just went, hey, look, yeah. let's give them something. Well, I so, think, I think yeah, I really appreciate that one because that was two people being unselfish. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I like that part of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's a fantastic example and I think that there's a couple of things going on there in my mind. I mean, there's obviously the culture of the business and the fact that it's what I would call a culture of empowerment. The fact that the colleagues on the front line are able to are able to do something like that because you wouldn't do that unless you'd already been told, you know, you can probably do this for one or two customers a day. Um, I think it says a lot about, you know, the culture of the business and, and maybe to some extent, uh, you know, we know that John Lewis and Waitrose, who are part of the same group where everyone in the business is a partner and they all have some ownership. Maybe it stems from that, but, but one way or the other, it's a very positive thing. It's what we also call in the trade a random act of kindness. So I'm sure that you have, outside of just talking about that on this podcast, I'm sure outside of this, you will have shared that with many people. Um, and, and that amplifies a great experience and amplifies, you know, obviously your great experience with that brand. And I'm sure will encourage other people to come in. Manny, Claire, what about you? Have you had uh, some good experiences recently you want to call out? Yeah, I, so a school friend of mine and I took our daughters to Pizza Express in my hometown and the it was quite clear that the manageress was the only person really doing anything we waited probably over an hour for food to come we had drinks so we were fine but the kids were kind of getting a little bit restless mm. and there was just a lot of young people kind of standing around chatting and they're really, really overworked, overstretched manageress. And she was really apologizing when she was, um, when it, she, she gave us the food. And we said, look, it's, it's absolutely fine, we've got it. And when um, we were paying, I said, do you get your tips? Because I've started to do that now, because I know often if you're doing it on a card, it doesn't always go to the staff. Um, so I was going to give her a ta cash tip and she said, no, I never get the tips. Don't tip them because they haven't helped me. And she kind of felt like she could offload to my friend and I saying, no one's helping me. This is why your food was late. So because I'd booked through the Pizza Express app, they did a feedback. How was your experience? And I felt like I was sticking up for her. I wasn't complaining. That's how it felt. I I just said, look, we had great food. It's always great. The pizzas are kind of 
never let you down but your manageress wasn't being supported and this is not a you know i want young mm. people to lose their jobs but i felt like she needed that it needed saying and then they sent four pizza vouchers saying we don't want you to have this experience please go back and have this so i the interesting thing was i said to my friend oh look i've got two vouchers for you and two for me and he was like how did you get them and when i told him he went oh you're such a grass and i said no uh, i'm just standing up. Yeah. but i do think you know if they're going to send you a feedback form you kind of have to be honest about your experience and uh, maybe it's because i waitressed when i was young i sort of feel like i could see how stressed she was um but it was what a nice doing? touch them doing that it's a really nice touch, but Sorry. what would have been, in yeah. my mind, what would have been even better or, or would have made it even more effective as an experience for you is if they come back to you and say, thank you so much for your experience. Here's some vouchers because uh, we really appreciate the feedback, but also here's what we're going to do to train and develop the people that are in that particular yeah. Pizza Express to make sure this doesn't happen again. You know, so yeah. <clears throat> I think something, some kind of, uh, positive feedback or feedback about you know the process they were going to undertake in order to improve yeah. things would have also been reassuring, yeah. I guess, because there's always a risk to you that you, you you got your vouchers but you go back there and have the same experience again, which would be a bit yeah. frustrating. So interesting, uh, Leila. Any any good experiences to call out recently? Yeah, so this one is um, not quite so recent, about a year ago, so um, with three. So I ordered a new phone and contract in haste, um, I think once, instead of upgrading. Um, so I think what they once they found out what I'd done, they were, a bit, they were quite helpful and got me a better deal as an upgrade. Um, so it, it all kind of went a bit south when I posted the handset back to them and they'd lost it somewhere on their side. So, you know, I'd done what you need to do, kept, kept the postage receipt till they confirmed receipt of it um, on their like web chat thing. So checked, um, checked that they got it. Um, anyway, so I'm suddenly getting chased by their collections department saying, give us our phone back. Um, and I'd say, I have given it back. Your operator confirmed on this date um, that you'd received it. And then, um, you know, they were asking me to prove it by sharing a copy of my postage receipt, which mm. I'd binned once they told me they had it. So, you know, I don't make the rules Marie Kondo does, but <laughs> then yeah. uh, just ended up, say, um, basically ended up in this kind of almost Mexican standoff where the, the customer support team members kept saying, you can't prove that you sent it back to us. And I kept saying, well, you, you know, you, you can't get, apparently you don't act, keep the copies of your, uh, your web chats. And so, um, you know, I'd been the delivery slip, they'd been the chat history, so who was in the right kind of thing. So I was, wasn't was getting anywhere and frankly was starting to feel like they thought I was a criminal, like I'd t taken this phone. So I um, like took to Twitter, um, which I hate doing, but it's one of those things that, you know, kind of like last um, ditch resort, because it was kind of was going round and round in circles with the same people that were saying, but we haven't had it, you know, and I was like, but you told me on this date. So they, um, so I tweeted, so classic, you know, someone from their social media team um, picked it up um, and she actually really did go above and beyond to kind of dig into the case. And, you know, I mean, there must be thousands of these kind of things going on there, but, um, you know, and it's not, not necessarily even her job, but just, you know, she sort of ascertained, ascertained that there was some kind of error on their part. So the phone really genuinely had got lost somewhere in their um, warehouse between being checked in and, you know, going, getting back to wherever it needed to go to. So, you know, she kind of explained, um, she sort of come back to me every day explaining, you know, this is who I've spoken to, um, this is, uh, you know, this is where we think it is, um, this was the problem that you've encountered and this is what we're doing with our processes now to, um, you know, to make sure that this kind of thing doesn't like slip through the net again, um, you know, and obviously we'll sort out your problem. And she kind of like really did like a whole end to end thing on it. And, you know, bless this girl, she was a social media person. So like not in customer services, but kind yeah. of, um, you know, I think um, she took ownership of it, though. Right. And she sorted yeah. it. So definitely. And I think that's the thing. It's kind of like, um, you know, the, the staff that I was dealing with prior to that clearly didn't have the autonomy within their job role to kind of go and above and beyond and sort of say, actually, OK, I get what you're saying here. Um, it just doesn't seem right. I'm going to look into it. But they're just kind of like, no, no, computer says no, computer says no. So I think there's something in there for brands to kind of be able to empower their staff almost with the autonomy to to kind of take charge of a situation and think about it from through the customer's lens with a common sense point of view um yeah. you know but then it, it, i think it's to do with processes yeah well i think it's, it's processes and empowerment to your point and i think 
what was really interesting, as you said, you, you know, you were dealing with a customer support team, which is slightly ironic, isn't it? Because it's the customer lack of support team, by the sounds of it, you met initially, and then you were, but then you were met by someone who took it upon themselves because they had that the right, you know, outlook and mindset to to resolve it for you, rather than that necessarily being a process or a way of working across the business. At least that's how that particular issues come across to me. And I think that what you're describing there is what I think is is quite common, you know, in that we we spend a lot of time focusing on the cost to serve customers rather than focusing on their lifetime value, which leads us to make these decisions where we almost treat, it's like treating somebody as guilty before they can prove that, that they're actually innocent, which is entirely in my mind the wrong way of doing it. Surely it should be the other way around, which is we'll presume your innocence now let's just make sure we can prove it. <laughs> uh, would have been a better way of dealing with that rather than, you know, treating you as if you are basically trying to pull one over on them, you know? Very interesting. Um, I think that's a nice segue into customer service generally. Marie Claire, have you had any issues where, from a customer service point of view, you've contacted a brand and you've just found you've really not got anywhere in terms of getting it, getting it resolved? Yeah, it was interesting when Layla said, you know, you treated like you, you're feeling like a criminal. I once complained. I'd been in Selfridges. I was much younger, and I bought. Um, it, it was kind of like a, a, a similar to fast fashion, fast cosmetics brand. I was buying some nail varnish, and I put it on the on the till while they were ringing it up, and it slid off and smashed all over my shoe, ruined the shoe, cut my foot. And the, the guy serving was so cool, you know, he, he couldn't have cared less that it had happened. And it's not that it was his fault, but I felt embarrassed and, you know, my sh shoes damaged. And I just felt, I was, yeah, my fo foot had cut. And I felt like there was no kind of duty of care to say, are you okay? Can we get you something to wipe your shoe? And I actually was just upset. I sort of thought it, I was so dismissed and it felt like it was a vibe of the store. Now, obviously a concession, very different. They're not Selfridges brand, but um, I felt I had to, to write to them and say, and it was, I think it was, you wrote letters back then. It wasn't even email. I, I wrote to them to say this had happened and I got this letter back with some free products which wasn't the point i didn't i didn't want their stuff ever again but what the the tone of it was you put we've spoken to our member of staff you put the nail varnish on a convex part of the um till so it was your fault that it happened and i just found like it was so hostile and rude i i really felt dismissed and just you know i didn't want any free stuff i wanted it not to happen to somebody else again and then feel so sure. stupid it really was a horrible thing yeah i mean i think that's again maybe from a bygone era possibly from a pre you know you were, you, you talked about being quite a bit younger then i mean i'm not sure i can totally understand why that would have happened then i would like to think it wouldn't happen today yeah. i happen to know that i happen to know the chief marketing officer there and the chief customer experience officer and i Knowing them as I do, I, I, I would imagine they would have a better focus on it uh, and be much more customer centric. But I think it may have been down to the concession element of it, I guess, because that's yeah. one, of the, one of the hard things to some extent, isn't it, for department stores to manage is it, often yes. when concessions are being run by different entities, is how you keep that sort of consistency of service when you've almost got and, and, you know, lots of brands within a brand. And to that point, it wasn't Selfridges I complained to. It was actually the yeah. concession. So I, yeah, I felt Selfridges did their job. It was more right. really dismissive. Yeah, yeah. Dave, any customer service issues that you you could call out that you've maybe had that uh, didn't 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 go the way you hoped they would? I mean, recently, not really. Um, the only people that I think there's a bit of a stereotype I think on social media is when you go to JD Sports where I only go to get exactly the same trainer same time each year just to replace the previous one so Puma Suede's colour might change but the price stays about the same 
and you always turn up and you just sit there and it feels like a doctor's waiting room because they just take forever in the storeroom and then while they're going to go and get your stuff they forget all about you and deal with the next person so what should be a quick in and out ends up being like half an hour and most of your lunch break's gone and then you get the receipt and they ask how was it click here for some feedback and you do and you can't specifically call out exactly who it was that took that long it's just like did you enjoy your experience yes no and it it never fully allows you to express the right. issue that you've had so <clears throat> while i've not had any customer service issues the reason is is because i just can't get that far to express myself right. and then conversely if i did have a good experience these forms generally never allow you to name drop the person that did an amazing job so right. yeah but I'm, I'm quite tolerant and patient i don't complain too much I try and think of that person in yeah. that role so i'm quite it sounds, like, it sounds like jd i mean that obviously could be down to you know lack lack of training or process but it is probably a technology opportunity i would have thought for them to improve the you know the kind of um supply chain almost within the store in terms of being able to get products to you much quicker and that could be done through i think that could be done partly through technology as well as through maybe slightly better processes and obviously making sure that you're not being left on your own to your own devices sitting there for half an hour not knowing not knowing what's going on leila what about you any any customer service issues specifically any other issues to call out that you've had where things could have maybe been handled a bit better from your perspective yeah, I mean, so actually very recently, so um, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, I've, I've got had COVID the last week, so I'm isolating. And obviously that meant that I missed, um, you know, seeing my dad on Father's Day. So, you know, a couple of days in advance, or so three or so days, um, you know, I'd gone on to like a, a website of a flower delivery company and I thought I'd buy him a, a lemon tree. You know, it's like a masculine version of sending flowers. So, um, you know, and kind of s selected it from the Father's Day um, menu, you know, kind of, uh, uh, and you know selected of course they they pre-selected there it's delivered on sunday so i was like great amazing you know it was slightly over the odds cost wise but i was like well you know what can i do so i um you know paid for it and you know waited a couple of days and then the day before it was due to um be sent so this is saturday um i checked my emails at about i don't know 7 p.m um, as you do, and um, seeing that I'd, I'd, had, I'd had an email at two o'clock in the afternoon saying, oh, by the way, this product is out of stock. Can you, do you want to choose something else? And um, so I thought, oh, God, you know, like that's it's the next day. So I replied straight away and said, OK, fine, I'll, you know, I'll um, have this one instead. And they sort of got, got back to me around sort of 11 a.m. The, the following day, obviously on Father's Day. And they're like, OK, great, thank you. Um, you know, we'll refund the difference. And I was like, well, is it going to be delivered? Um, you know, is it going to be delivered today still? Mm -hmm. And um, and they were like, well, no, it's, you know, you didn't reply until X date. So I was a bit like, yeah, well, you know, I think in, a, in something where something is time sensitive, I would pick up the phone because, you know, you put your phone number there along with all your other information. Um, mm -hmm. There kind of like wasn't any real willingness on their side to kind of do anything to rectify the situation mm -hmm. I had to be. Well, if you don't mind me asking, sorry to break in, did, did they know that it was for Father's Day? Did they know that it was a Father's Day gift? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so it, was, it was from a special, you know, specific... Oh, yes, it's a special Father's category, Day. right. Okay, right, got you. Category, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it had a Father's Day card with it and everything. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was kind of a bit like, you know, like, yes, obviously this, you know, this is clearly for Father's Day, so therefore, you know, we'll just pick up the phone. And it was... It was kind of, um, you know, only a small thing, but it was just a bit like, you know, if something is time sensitive, you know, especially deliveries yeah. of flowers and stuff like that, people often need them to get there on, you know, a specific yeah, day. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Make a bit more effort to contact the person. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, they could have been, they could have been proactive there about actually reaching out to you and explaining what the options were um, instead of you then being stuck and, and having to sort of make apologies to your father for the fact that you is uh, gift is going to arrive a day or two later than planned. Although I have to say, well done you for investing in a, in a, in a lemon tree or whatever I ended up getting in the first place. I got two cream eggs and a bottle of wine. So that tell for my two daughters, so that tells you all you need to know about my, uh, my, my living habits. But anyway, there you go. Listen, it's been a really good conversation. I very much enjoyed your feedback. Um, Leila, Marie, Claire, Dave, thank you so much for spending some time with me. And um, we're going to be doing this on a regular basis. So I appreciate you uh, continuing to hopefully support this little episode as we uh, 
give a share insight to brands about how they can serve customers more effectively and about the things that are concerning you as consumers because you know you're a real living example of what people are facing into it not only now but really at any time and how brands can address that and serve you more effectively and deliver better experiences so thank you so much i'm very grateful